All right, so you have built a model, say an airplane, and now you want to put it in a render, but you want to have lots of them. So you want to have an entire squadron of airplanes. Uh, one thing you need to worry about is memory usage, right? You can't just duplicate willy-nilly because eventually you're going to run out of memory if you don't do things the right way. Uh, the other thing you might want to think about is how can you make the airplanes a little different because um, they wouldn't all be exactly the same. You know, in this case, they would have different tail numbers. Other aircraft might have maybe different unit numbers on the side. Uh, maybe they would have different nose art. Um, so wouldn't it be nice if you could just kind of duplicate the model and then have all of those things change automatically with each model and not use tons of memory in the process. So if you're interested in doing that, I can show you how to do that. So I'm going to go to side view here. And I want you to pay attention to the amount of memory we're hearing or using right here. I'm just going to address the memory issue first. So this model is obviously a low poly kind of a background type image. It's not something you'd want to put up close to the camera, but it certainly works at a distance. All of this is inside this low poly Betty collection here. So if I go into side view and go back into render so we can see it, I'm going to move it down there. If I hit Shift A and I go to Collection, so here's my ad, my ad menu, all the way down here at the bottom, Collection, and I'm going to choose that low poly Betty collection that has all of my pieces in it. It's going to generate an airplane. I'm going to hit Alt R to change the direction on it. So I want you to look at two things. One, I want you to look at the memory. We did increase memory a little bit, right? We're up to 3.2, but notice the numbers are different now. Now, if I hit Alt D to duplicate that collection. Look what happens, I got a new number, and we're still at 3.2 gig. Alt-D, new number, 3.2 gig. Alt-D, new number, 3.2 gig. And the reason I can keep making these duplicates is because I'm duplicating a collection instance, right? So when I did this collection instance, I'm sharing a lot of the data from the original bit. I'm not making duplicates of that. So Blender is able to reuse all of those items that would otherwise be filling up your memory. So I'm just going to keep making new airplanes here. You can see how each time I do it, I start I start to run out of tail numbers because I only have so many of them in the system. Um, but uh, at some point, I'm going to start picking up some other ones that I can start. And I can actually you know, delete ones that are duplicates that I want, and then uh, maybe pick up some other ones. So you get the point. So I've got a whole flight of aircraft uh, with many different numbers on them. And like I said, if you were doing a uh, nose art or um, maybe squadron markings and stuff like that, this would work just as well. But I just wanted a simple example where just the numbers changed. So we've already addressed the first issue. How do you duplicate things without using too much memory? And the, the idea there is you want to use this collection instance, and then you can just Alt-D those collections. Uh, you notice that these things are actually not editable at all. It's an entire unit um, as opposed to the your original model that has individual pieces. So let me get rid of all those. We don't need them for now. And we'll talk about how to create that number that changes on the tail. So you'll notice that this plane has three colors on it. And these colors represent shaders that I've assigned to the various parts. So all of the blue bits have the same shader attached to them or assigned to them. And if we go over to shaders, you can see I've called this LP Betty 1. And if we look at the shader network for it. Uh, it's pretty much what you, you would expect. I exported this model into Substance Painter, painted it there, and you know exported the colors back into uh, Blender. So I've got my diffuse color coming out of Substance Painter, my metallic channel, my roughness channel, the opacity channel I use for glass and alphas and holes, and then I have a height. Right, so that's how I shaded this. And the yellow uh, shader is the same exact thing, except it uses a second set of files. Uh, each one of these groups of colors, so let's say if I pick the, the yellow bits, all right, and if I go into edit mode, you can see that it has a, a UV space. So I got all the yellow bits mapped into the 0, 1 UV space. And same thing with the blue bits. The blue bits are all mapped into their own uh, version of the 0 to 1 space. Right? They use a different um, set of texture files, because they're just, but they're still in zero to one space, and the orange ones um, also have the same setup, but they have an additional UV map. So when I created the file that was exported into Substance Painter, I exported it 
using the default UV map that these other guys have, right? The yellow and the blue uh, shaders here both have the default UV map that gets created when you, whenever you unwrap something. And so did the uh, orange bits. So there's this last group, this, there's third, this third shader here. All has the default UV map. And if we look at that, see if I get just that one less selected. I'm just going to select the top one. All right, so the default UV map is packed into 0 and 1. But then I needed to isolate just the areas that I wanted to put the decals on. Uh, and you could have reused this map, I guess, but the idea is that uh, I wanted the decals to be, to use as much texture space as possible so that they'd be clean and uh, have good resolution. So what I did is I took the, the rudder, say, and going into side view, um, select your object, and then hit the plus sign here. And that is going to create a new UV map. And if we go into the editor, if I hit tab and go to editor, you can see that all it did was it copied the UV islands from this default map, the one that was currently active when I hit the cop when I hit the plus button, and created a new map called UV map 001. So now what I want to do is I want to reuse and rescale this UV map so that it fills up this entire texture space. So let me see which side is which. All right, so this is the right side. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to scale them both up. I'm going to go to uh, the cursor mode so I can scale from this corner. I'm just going to scale it up so it's a little bigger. Do that. I'm going to take this guy and maybe rotate him 90 degrees, put him like that, and just scale everything up again so that I'm, I'm using as much space as I need to. Now, if you were doing other bits of the airplane, you would also need to leave room for that. So if you were doing you know, nose art or markings on the side of the fuselage, you would want to leave room for those UVs as well. So I've created a custom UV map just for this bit. Now, for this shader to work, all the other orange bits also need to have this same map. So if I pick this guy and I have plus, and I go into edit mode and I select everything. Now this time, however, I don't want the textures to ever appear on, I don't want my decals, to, my, you know, my custom decals, to ever appear on this bit. So what I do is, in the uh, UV editor, making sure that I'm on the 2D cursor, I hit S and zero, and it's gonna scale it down to this tiny little point here. And since it's basically a single point, there is no texture to place on it, so textures will never appear, appear that those decals will never appear on this part of the model. And I would do the same thing for the other various orange bits here. And you can see that in my markings, if I select my markings UV map, I've got my little point there, and the same thing for this one. There's my basic UV map, but if I go to markings, it's just this point in there. So let me go back here. I don't need these, because I've already done this. And let's take a look at our UV map, our special markings UV map for our rudder. So that's our layout. And if I select everything and I say UV, export UV layout, and I'm going to call it UV. I've already done this before. Give it a size. 1024 is plenty big for me uh, for this, but you could make it bigger. And I'm going to export that. And then in Photoshop, bring Photoshop over. You can see I've already created a file here. Let me uh, close this up for a minute and turn that off. And if I go File, Place, and I want to place that UV layout. This is the UV layout we just created. And it's gonna show us basically where our UV is on this 1024 by 1024 screen. So I confirm the, the place. And you can see that I've already created some numbers here. And this, back, this green background here is just to make things easier to see. So you can see that I've got this 278 number overlaid on top of my UV layouts. And that's just you know text that I put in Photoshop. Um, so I hide that and I hide this. You can see what I've got. It's kind of like a decal sheet for a plastic model. I've got you know the opaque numbers that we want to put on the tail. And then all this checkered bit is going to be the clear alpha, you know, the part of the decal sheet that, that, is, that is transparent. So at this point, I just need to have a bunch of these numbers. So I've got you know, this 278 number, I'm gonna turn this back on and see it better. And I've got the 278, I've got this 292, just on down the line. I've created a bunch of numbers in exactly the same spot, and I've created 10 of them. 
So I have 10 different numbers here. And then I have exported these or saved them as, a so file save as, as PNGs. And this one is the 298 one, so I would save it as the 298 PNG. And that's going to save it with an alpha file or an alpha channel. So we have this clear bit. And that's all I do to create the individual tail numbers. Uh, so let's uh, get out of Photoshop. We're done with Photoshop. And let's go back to here. So how do you make the numbers change randomly on here? That's that's the cool part here. So let's take a look at the shader for the uh, for this orange set of pieces, this LP Betty 3. So let's go here. And it looks repetitive, but it's not too bad. So this bit here should be familiar, right? It's what we saw before. We have a metal shader going into the metal channel, roughness into roughness, opacity into the alpha, height going into a bump and a normal, and everything is being run off the default UV map. Okay, so this is important to pay attention to. This is going to use the default UV map. Over here, you can see the, out, the input for the color for the principal channel is all of this. And it starts over here with that base color. So this is the diffuse uh, uh, diffuse file that was created by Substance Painter for the color of the model. So if we went and looked at that in our UV editor, right, that's what this looks like. It's just the just the colors on the airplane, but it doesn't have the tail numbers on it, right? It's just the underlying basic colors of the airplane. So that's what comes in here using the using the default UV layout goes through the texture file, the image texture, and then it goes into this node that I've created. So we've got the basic color of the airplane, you know, the camouflage basically going into this group. And if I open up this group, I hit tab, go in here, we can see what's going on. Now here we see a different UV map. So instead of using the standard UV map, which is the default one here, I've used the UV map node and I select the markings, which is that custom UV map that we created for the rudders. All right, so that's the UV map we're using. And I'm going to use that map for each of those PNG files that we created with the numbers, right? So you know, a second ago, I saved that file. So if I look at, um, say, 323, three. I have one that actually exists. There we go. All right, so look at that one. That's what this file looks like, the 321 three, file. So this file here is this file here. You can see the alpha channel on it, and it's being mapped using that markings, UV layout. So what happens is that UV layout comes, or that uh, we use, we're telling Blender to use this UV layout to take this image texture, and then we're going to take the input, which is the base color, the, um, the camouflage color we saw a second ago, and it's gonna mix those two together. It's basically gonna overlay the decal on top of that base color, and it does that using the alpha channel. So that alpha channel here is basically all this checker bit here, right? It's telling Blender where there is stuff and where there isn't stuff. So it's really just gonna overlay these little numbers uh, on top of the camouflage. That's what this mix node does. And then the output of each one of these mix nodes comes up to this kind of like group output node so that you know the 278 sticker decal gets output from the 278 slot here and the 306 decal gets output to the 306 decal slot here. All right, so that's what that looks like. So let's get out of this. And then you can see how the output comes here. So this is basically just going to take the, the camouflage of the aircraft and then put a sticker on the appropriate place. And if we look at any one of these outputs, that's what we would see. But how do we get it to randomly uh, choose a number, uh, choose what number to put on the tail? So we do that using a random the random function of the object info node. So this node is going to create a random number for every object, and the number is going to be between zero and one. So it's going to be a decimal number between zero and one. And then I run that number into a node that I've created, I call it between, which lets me lets me just output a zero or one, true or false, if the random number coming in is between two values. So if the random number coming in is between 0.5 and 0.6, it's going to output 1 or true. If the input, if the number coming in here is not between them, it's going to send out a 0, be false. So let's take a look at an example. Say the random number comes in here, and it starts at the bottom and work our way up. 
uh, random number comes in here, it comes into this between function. Let's say the number that's coming in is, is uh, 0 0.05. All right, so it's going to be between 0 and 1. So let's take a look inside this node that I made. So 0 0.05 is the number that comes in, and it comes up to this less than. It says, is 0 0.05 less than, and the other the number, remember, is 0.1 and 0. Is looking for, is it between 0 and 0.1? So is 0 0.05 less than 0.1? True. Right, so that's going to output a 1. And then the same thing, or similar thing, it comes in and says, is 0 0.05 greater than 0? True. So it takes a 1 and a 1, multiplies them together, you get 1. 1 is true, so it outputs true. So 0 0.05 comes into this node, it's going to output a 1. If a 0 0.05 came into this node, the same, I mean, it's the same node function, but if it came into this function, then the 0 0.05 would be less than this 0.1, right? So it would come in here. It would, this would be generated 0 because it's false, right? 0 0.05 is not greater than 0.1. So it would be, this would be a 1 still. So it would be 1 times 0 is 0. So it's going to output a 0, which is false. So the net result is that I've got 10 comparisons here. And each one goes, goes for 1 tenth of a unit. So from 0 to 1. 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to 3, all the way up to 0 0.9 to, to, to 1. So any randomly generated number in here between 0 and 1 is going to be true for just one of these uh, comparisons. So let's say it's down here. Let's say it comes in here and it says that it is true, that the number is between 0 and 0 0.1. So a 1 comes out, that's true. If this is a true, a 1, this mix node is going to output the value from the second color slot. All right, now that like second color slot is the decal 323. All right, and then it's going to pass that information up to here. Now, what basically happens is it percolates all the way up. So if this is true, then none of these others are going to be true. And then that this 323 number is going to be the final output over here. But let's say that uh, the number really was between 0.1 and 0.2. So this would be false. So it would just pass a, a white up to this next one into this color slot. And then it would evaluate this between node and say the random number is between 0.1 and 0.2. That's a true. So this mix node would then return the value from the second color slot, which is the 321 decal. So you can see uh, hopefully I'm explaining it well. I realize it's a little awkward, but you can see how that it, if any one of these is true, whichever one of these is true, it's going to basically return the mix of this and whatever decal is associated with that mix node. And then the final output then goes into the principal node. So that's why if I repeat it too many times, I start seeing duplicate numbers because I only have 10 of them. Uh, but you could certainly, if you wanted more refinement, you know, break this up in even to smaller, smaller groups. And uh, that's pretty much how it works. Um, I'm going to put this model up on BlendSwap so that if people, uh, I realize that explanation, that explanation might be hard to understand, but I think what, if you played with it, you'd see how it works. It's kind of cool. Uh, but the idea that you can just create instances and A, not use lots of memory, and B, um, you know, have unique numbers show up, it's kind of cool. It gives you a way to just quickly customize your scenes. And once you do it once, then you know, I could put this plane into scene after scene after scene, and I don't have to worry about uh, them looking too repetitive, because I've got you know, different numbers on them. And you could even extend that into even more than just yeah, like nose art. You could even do like camouflage and wear and that kind of stuff as well. All right. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, how to make these base meshes and how to make a texturing and substance painter, I have a whole series of tutorials on that. I'll put a link for that in the description. Um, but I hope this was helpful for you if you were trying to use a, a background model to kind of fill in your scene and, and didn't want it to be too repetitive. All right, thanks for watching.